<laughs> hey everybody uh great to see you again i've got a new version of ryan's tools out i'm so excited for this one it's got so many cool new things ryan's tools 2.1 uh this is uh one of my favorite uh, releases actually there's so many cool things in this can't wait to get into it all right let's dive in Okay, the first new feature of Ryan's Tools 2.1 is actually something I brought back from the dead, uh, bringing back AMP detail. So this is something that I got rid of because ZBrush added these things called contrast brushes, which are supposed to amplify detail. Um, and so I thought, oh, amplify detail isn't needed anymore. However, I'm bringing it back because it does some things that the contrast brushes just don't do. So let's take a look. All right, so one of the main advantages here is uh, increasing detail over the entire surface of the model. So let's click on AMP Detail. And so it's just gonna take a moment to process. And okay, it's ready. So let's just come down to Morph Target. And so you can see if we grab and slide the slider, the entire surface is having the detail increased. If we slide it the other way, you can see it's actually removing all the detail. So this is something that the contrast brushes just don't allow you to do. Another thing I don't like so much about the contrast brushes that are built into ZBrush is that every time you stroke with them, it has to recalculate the amplification of detail. However, with my amp detail, you just click it once, it processes, and then you can just jump in and start sculpting at will, and it doesn't have to stop and think about it between every stroke. Okay, so let's take a look at Balloon Extract. It's a new feature right here, and it works based on masking. So all you have to do is mask uh, some sort of shape onto whatever you're working on, and click Balloon Extract. And so what this is going to do is it's going to look at the mask and see what areas are thick and thin, and then the thick areas will puff out more, and the thin areas will stay nice and thin in 3D shape. Okay, so what we got here is a simple object. Some of it gets a little uh, buried inside the original object, but that's easy enough to pull out. So now we've got a quick little creature crawling up Anthony Fauci's face. Uh, exactly what you would expect. Okay, now let's take a look at an entire new section of tools that I've added in Ryan's Tools 2.1, and this is Easy Shell. Now these tools are built around the idea of precision. So especially for 3D printing, but also for a lot of other uses, you might want to make sure that things are very precise thickness or embossing or engraving. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works. Uh, first off, what I wanna do is just mask a couple areas where uh, maybe some little uh, dimples or, or hairs could be growing out of. Okay, and so let's say this is going to be 3D printed, and we want to inset these areas, but we want it to be a precise amount. And so with 3D printing, for example, if it's not deep enough, that detail isn't pronounced enough, it might not come out to be visible. So what we want to do is have it so the area that we want to affect is what's unmasked, and let's set the shell thickness. So let's say, for example, we're printing this on a resin printer, uh, a lot of times, uh, you'll probably find that for those types of printers, a minimum thickness is 0.02 inches, or, or minimum depth uh, for detail like this is 0.02 inches. Okay, so that's set, and now simply click on Inset. And then we can clear the mask. And so now we know that this detail meets the minimum requirement for printing on a Risen printer. Now this is dependent on the fact that your model should be set up with a correct scale already. So if we go to the transpose line here, we can see this is um, eight, a little over eight units tall. So let's say this is printing eight inches tall. So you want to make sure you're setting the shell thickness in inches. Now, if this were centimeters, obviously this would be a different number that you would have to calculate. Okay, let's look at another use for this. So let's say we wanna give this guy a hat. So I'm just going to mask where a little cap would start, and let's go to Extract. Now this also is going to take into account the shell thickness. Let's say we want this cap to be 0.1 inches thick, and click Extract. Okay, so now what it's done is it's created this new sub-tool. I'm just going to move it back up into the group here. 
and it's added thickness, but the thickness is added with the dynamic subdivision. So it's not locked in thickness yet. So what we can actually do is like change the offset on this, for example, so that it's going um, off the top of the surface of the head. And then if we wanted to lock that in, we could just click apply. However, what I'm going to do is just turn off dynamic. So we've just got the, the regular old surface right here. And there's a couple other ways we can add thickness to this with these new easy shell tools. So uh, for one, let's click extrude. So what extrude does is it gives it some thickness, but with the ability to play with that thickness after we've made it. So under morph target, if we just click and drag on morph target, what you can see is that we can create a sort of a dynamic preview. So this is good for setting the thickness um, in a sort of visual aesthetic uh, intuitive way rather than a precise thickness. So let's see, let's get the, the whole hippo in here and let's say we want it up here. Okay, that looks great. Uh, for example, you could also have it go the opposite direction. It just flips the object inside out. So all you have to do for that is um, go to display properties and flip if you don't want your object to be inside out. But for this one, I just want to go back to morph target and have this going back out this way. Okay, great. Now, the third way to add thickness, I'm just going to undo that actually back before we added any thickness, uh, is with shell. And so shell takes into account the precise number here. So if we click on shell, what it's going to do is add exactly 0.1 inches of thickness. So that's if you want an exact amount of thickness added. Okay, great. So let's take a look at, actually, let me uh, add some extruded thickness just so we have an object to play with here. Okay, great. So now let's look at the final option here, which is hollow. And what this is great for is hollowing out the entire model so that it can be ready for 3D printing. Let's look at our subtools here. Now there's several different subtools in this group. And so what we can do is create a hollow subtraction object from all of these. So let's just go ahead and run this Boolean with subdivisions. Okay, let's take a look at the resulting object. So this is basically a uh, Boolean union of all the different objects, uh, eyes, body, hat, etc. Now let's create a hollow object for this entire character. What we want to do for this is define where the hollow openings should be. So I like to put them in an inconspicuous hidden place, like under the feet is good. And a shell thickness of 0.1 inches is usually good for a lot of 3D printing. So I'm going to click on hollow. Okay, so what we've got after doing this is a new subtool. And I'm just going to go into solo mode to see this. Actually, you can turn on this x-ray mode. So it's an object that is uh, the hollow interior shape for the entire character. So now what we can do is move this up into our group. We can hide the, uh, the resulting Boolean object. And so what you can see is that it's cutting out the shape of the interior hollow space. And it's also creating these little extra little bits that, that create the opening to the interior space. So now all we have to do to get this ready for 3D printing is run Boolean on this again. And what we get is a model with that hole cut out. Now you could uh, do a decimation master on it, for example, and export that for 3D printing. Okay, the only other thing uh, to talk about is the offset. It's uh, basically just the opposite of what I did on these uh, little dimples on the nose. Instead of uh, pushing them inwards, it would push them outwards by the exact number on the shell thickness. Okay, so those are the new features in Ryan's Tools 2.1. Uh, if you've already paid for it, you can go and download this upgrade for free. Uh, if you haven't paid for Ryan's Tools yet, this is a great opportunity to uh, give me a little contribution, help me uh, continue working on these tools so I can make some really great stuff next time. All right, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time and uh, hope you have a great one. See you next time.